with record high inflation, rampant crime, and the border coming to your backyard, Joe Biden has turned to payoffs to try to gain some momentum before the midterm elections. And those included his plan to use hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars to pay off student loans without an act of Congress, and now a push to pardon and decriminalize marijuana possession and products. A number of states are now suing the Biden administration in an effort to pause the loan forgiveness program. And they're also speaking out against his executive action on drugs this week, saying it sends the wrong message. For more, we are joined by Patrick Morrissey. He is the attorney general of the great state of West Virginia. Uh, general Morrissey, thank you for taking the time. Hey, it's great to be with you today. Thanks so much. Sir, your state is not a part of the, the lawsuit with respect to the student loans at this point, but you're a big supporter of this action that your colleagues are taking. Why do you think this loan bailout needs to be stopped? Well, look, first of all, I, think, I want to thank you for shining a spotlight on this important issue, because when Biden acted over the summer, he was doing so against the rule of law. Everyone knows that the administration lacked the authority to just wave the magic wand and eliminate $10,000 of debt. And especially, I think people know the policy problems with that. All that's doing is shifting that debt over to many other people. They're bailing out a lot of really rich people. And this is a bald-faced attempt to win votes in November. I think it's wrong in every level. Quite frankly, we were looking very closely at filing this suit, but we're analyzing the questions of standing, and different states may have different standing arguments because of the nature of how their states are mm -hmm. set up or the student loans in place. But we're strongly supportive of what they're doing because you cannot just take the law into your own hands. A president is not a king. I've also thought that this could be an opportunity with respect to the major questions doctrine, which is something that we were able to gain a big victory over the end of June, that West Virginia VPA case, that there's an opportunity to say, look, yeah. Congress gets to make these decisions and delegate. The executive doesn't just get to take it into his own hands. Yeah, I mean, the massive wealth transfer, massive expansion of welfare, and he thinks that he can just do it on his, on his own. Yeah. I, I, General, I, I want to turn to another issue. Uh, this week, uh, President Biden pardoned all of the federal offenses of so-called so simple marijuana possession. What are your thoughts on this, and what are the broader implications of a move like that? Look, uh, once again, I think the biggest problem with this is the rule of law. When an executive starts taking matters into his own hands in terms of just waving the magic wand when there's a law on the books it's meant to be enforced now look i know a lot of states have been uh reducing the pressure or changing the laws with respect to possession but i think it's so important for people to say you have to respect the boundaries of the constitution and law enforcement and when you start just waving the laws and uh, sending a message that complying with the law is not acceptable it is very dangerous implications it may have less implications for this particular issue in terms of the some of the folks that are mm -hmm. out there. But going forward, other types of drugs or other types of crimes, for Biden to do this, once again, shows he has no respect for the Constitution mm -hmm. and the rule of law. Go through it the right way. Go to Congress uh, right. and do it and change the right. laws. Don't just do it after the fact. General Morrissey, finally, you are part of a group of attorneys general pushing back on something called ESG, and we've talked about this on our program, and the woke agenda because of its negative impact on pensions and retirement investing for millions of Americans. You say the woke corporations and financial powerhouses are using very aggressive tactics to impact investment policy. Explain to our audience exactly what you're trying to do here and how it can hurt them. Uh, and I've, I've just got about, uh, about a minute or so left. So everyone watching knows that a lot of these large financial institutions, you know, the BlackRock, the Vanguard, and some of these groups are using enormous amounts of their pressure and their financial capacity to try to uh, dramatically encourage these companies to push these woke policies. That means getting rid of fossil fuels or having discriminatory policies against fossil fuels. It could relate to diversity, 
campaign contributions. It's a way to encourage the markets or force the markets through their financial wealth mm -hmm. to take actions which are inconsistent with what the boards or the people want. Right. West Virginia is oh. out in front pushing against these ESG policies. In West Virginia, we can't afford discrimination against fossil fuels. Sure. We also have to make sure that when we beat this administration on substantive policies, they don't use the federal agencies to try to transform all of them into be that, environmental regulators, diversity police, and, et cetera. And, and, and of course, and of course, if if you're not getting a return on the investment, people are losing money. The taxpayers are losing money. And that's exactly what's happening. West Virginia Attorney General thank Patrick you. Morrissey, thank you so much, sir, for your time today. I appreciate it. Thanks. No crooked, crooked establishment. None of that twisting, twisting the truth. No talking down don't to me. Don't tell me how to think. Don't tell me how to don't think. Don't tell me how to think. I trust Newsmax. Newsmax. They don't tell, tell me how to think. think. They let, let me decide. Newsmax. Real news. For real people.